Yeah, welcome to the lecture on topic modeling. It's going to be a short one, very practically oriented. Um, and the idea is really to just give you uh, an intuition about this unsupervised machine learning technique. The idea is to detect topics in sentences. And the model basically makes two assumptions. It basically regards a topic as a probability distribution over words. As you can see here on the left, you might have words like gene, genetic, and DNA, all related to a topic. And you have documents, which are regarded as a probability distribution over topics. So topic, probability distribution over words, document, probability distribution over topics. And it's all based on usage statistics. There's a lot of interesting, exciting math behind this that I won't go into detail in this video. You can read the paper. It's one of the most famous papers in machine learning, just called simply latent Dirichlet allocation. And it was published in the Journal of Machine Learning Research by David Bly, Henry Young, and Michael Jordan, which are all very famous machine learning researchers. It's quite well written. And um, yeah, I highly encourage you to look at this in more detail if you want to understand this. I'm just going to give you small intuition and overview, as I said. And for this, I have this very nice example from Edwin Chen. These are six, five different uh, sentences. For instance, I ate a banana and spinach smoothie for breakfast, or chinchillas and kittens are cute. And I'm going to use this to give you an intuition about how, intuition of, how this actually works. So what you ask, maybe you pause the video for a second and read the different sentences. And then you probably will agree with me that there are two main topics in this example. Topic A could be described as food, right, with banana and spinach. And topic B could be cute animals or just animals in general. And we could, for instance, say that sentence one and two are just about food, the three and four are just about cute animals, but there's also a bunch of sentences that are mixtures. And in a way, that's what we're doing here as well, right? We look at these probability distributions and we have uh, the possibility of considering them as mixtures. We could, for instance, also then characterize each topic based on the different terms related to it. We could say that in our example, the topic A on food is 30% about broccoli, 15% about bananas, 10% about breakfast, and 10% of munching. And that's just us statistically estimating how important these different words are for the topic. As I said, a topic is a probability distribution over words and how important the topics then are about for the document as a probability distribution over topics. And this can be used, as you saw in the lecture on natural language processing, to analyze large data sources, like, for instance, books. Here's an example by Matthew Jockers from the book Macroanalysis, for which he looked at thousands of English language books. And he identified different topics, for instance, one about family with terms like niece and nephew, and one about education, um, where terms like knowledge, education, study, studies are important. And we're going to consider another famous example that uh, I generated for you and this is basically me running the latent Dirichlet allocation on the 20 news group data sets. And I like this very much because if you talk conceptually about LDA, it sounds very powerful and it sounds very intuitive to people, right? You find topics and documents, everybody has an idea about what that means and what that entails. But the reality is uh, sometimes underwhelming. So I show you a real example from real data from news groups, that's a bit like Reddit nowadays, where people discuss in relation to different topics and they took 20 news groups and then put them all into one file and then had the algorithm pick out the different topics again. And what you can see here, so I looked for 10 topics in this 20 news group 
is that there's a bunch of topics that are just useless in a way. So this is basically artifacts from emails or something related to uni, something related to the emails with which in which these topics were contained. So there's a lot of topics that you really can't use in practice, but there's others that actually make a lot of sense. So here is, for instance, one topic related to health, AIDS, HIV, diseases. So this is actually a topic that sounds quite usable that you could use um, in your data. There's also one related to religion um, that, that makes a lot of sense. But then again, there's also one like the topic six, which are just random numbers. So yes, you can learn some things in this unsupervised fashion about data, but no, it's not perfect. And yes, it's a lot of work to actually clean this up. Still, I'm going to show you how to use this. Again, it's implemented as part of scikit-learn and you can use it. It's part of the package sklearn decomposition and it's called latent Dirichlet allocation. And this is basically the code that I used to generate the examples that I showed you before. So you can use the function fetch 20 newsgroups to download it. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So we're taking, we're, we're taking them, we're removing a lot of things that we don't want, the headers of the emails, the footers of the emails in which the news group uh, were sent, uh, and also direct quotes. We remove all that and just save our data set and take a subset of the data set. We take 2,000 samples here just to speed up the processing a bit, and we look for 10 different topics. And for each topic, we print out the top 20 words. What we first need to do, and you've seen this in the natural language processing lectures, we vectorize our text data, right? We can't just put the strings into the machine learning model. We have to turn the words into numbers. And what we're doing here is we use the count vectorizer, which is basically taking the a representation of each text as counts of words. We also do some mild pre-processing. We remove stop words, English stop words. We also remove words that are occur less than twice, and we remove words that occur more than in more than 95% of the documents. And then we have this hyperparameter features that we set to a thousand, and that relates to how we model it in the LDA. And then we take our data samples that we pre-process uh, and then pre-process it with the count vectorizer. And that's what we see in the second line of code or the third line in total. And we train the latent Dirichlet allocation model. So we put in our topics. We do five iterations in this model called, in this learning method called online. You can read in the scikit-learn uh, documentation about what that means. So we initialize the LDA model in the first line and then we train it using the fit function that we've seen many times before by now, hopefully. Yeah. And then we define this function called print topic words and that takes our model, it takes the feature names and the number of words that we want to print out and we just iterate over the model components of our LDA instance and then we print the ID of the topic and we print each of the feature names based on their frequency. That's what the topic.arc sort does. It looks really funky, but uh, just trust me on that one, it will work. You don't need to understand it unless you want to be a Python pro. And then we get the feature names and we print uh, the top words based on the model that we just trained. This is the code in total. Um, it's in the slides, you can hopefully copy it. Uh, and again, this is what I used to generate these topics. They might look differently for you because this is probabilistic, right? So we're working with probabilities. So there's always some variance. You won't get the same exact results twice, but they should in theory at least have a, a similar distribution.